Continuing on with chapter 10, we go to section 4, which is solving polynomial equations in factored form. Uh, not really too much to this, and I think you're going to like it. Continue with the shortcuts that we learned yesterday. To solve equations that are in factored form, we're going to use what we call the zero product property. The zero product property states that uh, when two zero, if a times b equals zero, in other words, if you multiply two numbers together and you get zero, then either a or b is zero. The only way to multiply two numbers together and get zero is to have one of those numbers be zero. So we're going to use that uh, property to solve today's equations. Here we go. So. If x minus 4 times x plus 1 equals 0, then either x minus 4 or x plus 1 is 0. So I'll write an equation. x minus 4 equals 0, and x plus 1 equals 0. Again, if this times this equals 0, then either this or this is 0. Now we solve both of the equations. Adding 4 to both sides of that one, and subtracting 1 from both sides of that one, and we get our solutions. Uh, let's take the time to check our answers, at least on this occasion. Let's plug 4 into the original equation. Instead of x, I'm just replacing them with 4. 4 minus 4 is 0, and 4 plus 1 is 5. 0 times 5 is 0. So that value works when you plug it into the original equation. Let's try negative 1. Negative 1 minus 4, and negative 1 plus 1. Negative 1 minus 4 is negative 5. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0, and negative 5 times 0 is 0. So both of these values work in the original equation, meaning they're both solutions. This is also uh, fits the zero product property. We've got x plus 8 times x plus 8 equaling 0. Um, this one's only going to have one solution, though. The only number that you can square and get 0 is 0. So x plus 8 must equal 0. And if x plus 8 equals 0, then x equals negative 8 when we subtract 8 from both sides of the equation. Let's go ahead and plug the answer in and make sure it works. Well, this equation looks uh, pretty difficult, uh, but we can use the same idea. 3x minus 2 could be 0. So I'll add 2 to both sides and divide both sides by 3. Or 4x plus 3 could be 0. So I'll subtract 3 from both sides and then divide both sides by 4. Or x plus 4 could be 0. So I could subtract 4 from both sides to get that answer. This isn't even a quadratic equation, uh, but it is in factored form, and those are the three solutions to the equation. 2 thirds, negative 3 fourths, and negative 4. So why don't you guys go ahead and try and solve this equation. Press pause, because I'm going to solve it also. When you're all done, press play, and we'll compare answers. OK, uh, hopefully by now you've identified a shortcut all you have to do is take the opposite of this number. So the opposite of negative 9 is positive 9, and the opposite of negative 7 is positive 7. So the solutions to this equation are 9 and 7. Try this one. Remember, press pause. I'm going to solve it as well. X has got to be 2 because 2 minus 2 is 0, and 0 squared is 0. Let's take the opposite of whatever that value is. Uh, maybe if you look back at example 3, you can identify a shortcut to do this one. Go ahead. Press pause. All right, you think you got it? Let's compare our answers. The opposite of 3, or negative 3 is 3. 
This one's a little trickier. It's not just negative 5. It's actually negative 5 over 2. And this one's not just 1. It's actually 1 over 5. You can do it out the long way like we did in example 3. Uh, but this is the pattern that you're always going to see. Well, here we've got a quadratic equation that's in, or excuse me, a quadratic function that's in factored form, and we're being asked to sketch a sketch a graph of it. Uh, you're going to be you're going to like this a lot more than uh, when they're in standard form, and we have to do negative b over two a to find the x value of the vertex is the first thing, uh, like we learned in lesson nine point three way back when. Factored form is also called uh, intercept form because the intercepts, the x-intercepts, are the solutions to the equation. So the x-intercepts are 4 and negative 2 because that's where y would be 0. So We can quickly plot those two points on our graph like I've just done. Okay. Now the next thing we need to know is where the vertex is. Well, because parabolas are symmetrical, I know that the x value of the vertex is exactly halfway between those two x-intercepts. So the easiest way to find out halfway between them is to add them up and divide by 2. So, there you see my axis of symmetry. I know that my vertex falls somewhere on this dotted blue line halfway between negative 2 and positive 4. Very simple math here. Don't make it tougher than it is. Add the two x-intercepts, divide by 2 every time. Now to find the y value of the vertex, we take the original equation, y equals x minus 4 times x plus 2, and we'll take this x value and plug it in. So 1 minus 4 and 1 plus 2. 1 minus 4 is negative 3. 1 plus 2 is 3. And when you multiply those two, you get an output of negative 9. So the y value of the vertex is negative 9. So you can see I plotted that right here. And from there, I'll go ahead and draw a parabola. It's not perfect. It's only got three points. In the past, we've done seven points. But it is a nice, quick sketch. In summary, find the x-intercepts, plot them. Find halfway between the intercepts, that's the x value of your vertex. Use that x value of the vertex to find the y value of your vertex. Okay, let's use the same concept to solve this real world problem. An arched garden trellis is modeled by this equation. With x and y measured in feet, how wide is the base and how high is the arch? Okay, well... I know that its x-intercepts are 2 and negative 2. If I make a real rough sketch of that, it might look something like this. There's our arch trellis right there. Uh, as far as the width is concerned of the trellis, it's this distance right here. So the distance between our x-intercepts, which we can find just simply by subtracting. 2 minus negative 2, which is a distance of 4 feet. The width is 4 feet. Now the height is a little bit different. The height is the y value of our vertex. We can find the height by plugging in the x value of a vertex, which is obviously 0. I don't think we have to do the math to figure that out. But we'll just plug 0 into this original equation that they gave us. So it's 0 minus 2 and 0 plus 2, uh, which is obviously going to be negative 2 and positive 2. We then multiply these three values, and we get the height of the trellis, which is 7.2 feet. That's how high the trellis is, and it is 4 feet wide. So I'm not asking you to actually graph this one, but how about just find the x-intercepts and the vertex? 
the x and y values of the vertex. Pause the video. I'm going to solve it as well. When you're all done, you can pair your answer to mine. Okay. Did you find the uh, x-intercepts and the vertex? Uh, the x-intercepts, not too much. Just the opposite of this, negative 2. And then the other one is actually going to be the opposite of this, 4 divided by 2, which can actually be simplified this time. 4 over 2 is 2. So there's our x-intercept. Now, to find the vertex, we're going to go ahead and add the two x-intercepts and divide by 2. The reason we did that is because uh, the vertex should be halfway between these two. That's why we're adding them up and dividing by 2. So the x-value of the vertex is 0. Then to find the y value of the vertex, we'll plug 0, the x value, into the equation. Instead of x plus 2, 0 plus 2. And instead of 2x minus 4, 2 times 0 minus 4. To be honest with you, I would normally do a lot of this math in my head. There's the y value of our vertex. So our vertex is the point. 0, negative 8. So between the vertex and the x-intercepts, we've got three points where we could make a very rough sketch of this parabola. Okay, last one. No. Why don't you go ahead and try and read this one and come up with an answer. I'm going to do the same. Alright, to find the width of the underpass, all we have to do is find the difference between its intercepts. Um, its x-intercepts are 10 and negative 10. So if I find their difference, I'll find that the width of the underpass is 20 feet. Now to find the maximum height of the underpass, I'm going to turn to the original equation and I'm going to plug the I'm going to plug 0 in for x. Why 0? Because I know that 0 is halfway between 10 and negative 10. I don't need to take do 10 plus negative 10 divided by 2 to find out um, that it's 0. So I plug 0 in both of those. And I'll simplify this equation now. And we'll find out that the maximum height also happens to be 20 feet. So its width is 20 feet and its height is 20 feet. Okay, um, if you need to see any of this again, make sure that you replay it. Um, solving equations in factored form is really not hard at all. Uh, the graphs might have confused you a little bit. Go back and watch those. We'll try them in class tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Have a good night.